man, what's on the video camera right now? Oh, there it is. Got it. Okay, cool. It's a thumbs up. I love it when creators are uh, very sly about slipping that in. Like the video if you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, so, episode two, Strongman Theory. I'm your host, Zach McCarley. We're going to talk about the seven categories of strongman movement today and why they're important and what kind of point distributions you can expect from those movement categories. So, the purpose of this video is to educate you on what, it, what movements are most important and what to expect in a contest and how to uh, swiftly evaluate events within categories so you can better identify what categories of movements you are not good at and what categories of movements you are good at, which then you can allocate your time more effectively to the movements that you are not so good at and really work on maintaining your movements that you are good at, thereby improving your overall competitive ability within the sport of strongman. So this is very largely based on a competitive theory of strongman, okay? So if that's not your thing, maybe a different series would be good for you, but today we're gonna to be talking about this. So the first category, actually we're gonna go through all the categories real quick and then I'm gonna talk about each one. So the seven categories of strongman movement are gonna be pressing, Static movement, dynamic movement, grip uh, movements, loading, medley and endurance movements, and then miscellaneous movements. And in the first type of movement, we have pressing. So in a one day contest, you're typically gonna see five events, right? And in that five events, you can expect to see one of those movements as definitely being a pressing event. That means that one of five events in a contest will be pressing. That's 20% of the available points for that contest being pressing. 20% of your points are going to come from your pressing ability directly. And in a two day contest, typically you see seven events. And in that seven event contest, you are going to see typically about two of those events, maybe one, but typically two. Uh, two of those events are gonna be pressing style events, which means 28.7% of your points are gonna be coming directly from your pressing ability. Let me paint it very plainly right now. Pressing is something that takes a while to develop and it's going to be something that you absolutely have to have to be competitive in strongman. So you must develop this effectively and quickly and also do your best to maintain your mobility in your shoulders. Most people don't do that and as a result, they, don't, they, they lose the ability to utilize their legs and core correctly in overhead pressing movements, which means people like me that aren't the strongest but can utilize their body the best or close to the best uh, excel in pressing movements because I know how to move my body, right? And we'll be talking about that in the future as well. Hopefully, in a different series. We'll see if you guys like the video and if you guys want to see that. So, what are pressing movements? What, what, give me a couple examples, right? We got log, we got axle, we got dumbbell, we got keg. And what kind of scoring criteria comes with these, right? Typically, these movements are scored in repetition format, which means you have a time domain, typically 60 seconds, to perform as many repetitions with a set weight as you can. Uh, and the most repetitions wins. Other times we have a max style event. Uh, so you're gonna see that repetition format showing up several times. So it's gonna be the same henceforth when I say repetition style. And then max format is a different type of style of scoring. So there's gonna be two categories of max or two types of max. There's gonna be a three attempt style, which is kind of like a powerlifting style. You have three attempts to lift the most weight as you can in the highest successful lift counts. And then you have what's called a last man standing style, which is going to be set jumps for everyone. Everyone takes every weight. Uh, you sometimes can pass on a weight, but you don't have the opportunity to go back and lift. So I suggest you hit probably every single repetition going up. Um, and the person that lifts the most weight wins the contest or wins that event, I should say. So those are the two styles of max. That is also a very common style of pressing. And then sometimes you see medleys. Those are a little bit more contested. Um, when people are speeding along through those movements, sometimes it's a questionable lockout and did they have control, did they not have control? People can get a little bit whiny about it. It's one of the only times people get whiny. I mean, strongman is a sport of passion and people definitely compete because they're passionate about the sport and there's really not a whole lot of other reason to do it, which is why I love the sport and it's also why it's very difficult to make a living as an expert in the sport. So. 
second movement style is gonna be static. This is also a very important style uh, or a very important category of movement to develop early and thoroughly because nobody walks into a gym and in two years pulls 900 pounds. But you don't have to pull 900 pounds to have fun in strongman or even be pretty competitive in strongman. But if you're looking to be highly competitive, which is really what this series is a bit more based on, then you're going to need to start developing your static power early and it's going to be a focus for a long time. And in competitions that are one day long, you're typically gonna see about 20% of your points coming from this style of movement. In a two day contest, you're gonna see about 14% of your points coming from this style of movement. That's gonna be one in seven events. <clears throat> Examples of this movement include deadlifts, squats, and holds of all kinds. Okay, so deadlifts alone you, I mean, we're talking several different types of movements. We're talking a standard barbell deadlift, a standard barbell deadlift from 18 inches, uh, a car deadlift with a straight bar, a side handle car deadlift, a trap bar deadlift. Um, we could be talking about several different types of deadlift. Um, th there are just so many, a farmer's deadlift. Uh, but the way that this is typically scored is going to be in a repetition style, so a set weight, a set time domain, as many repetitions as possible, we talked about that. And we also see the max style, which is gonna be the three attempts, which is the powerlifting style, or the last man standing, which we already talked about. And so those are gonna be the two main styles, but sometimes you do see a medley component to this, and typically at the end of the medley, there's a repetition component. So like you go through three different implements, and then on the third or fourth implement, you'll have to rep out as many as you can in the set time domain. So it's really more of a repetition, not so much of a medley. You could call it a fusion between the two. Moving on to the third style of deadlift, we have dynamic component. And you're gonna see one to two of the events in a one day contest consisting of dynamic movement, which is gonna be 20 to 40% of your points. This is a huge part. And sometimes there's not really a very good dynamic uh, event in a one day contest, but almost always there's one or two. And then in a two day contest, you're gonna see one or two again, which is gonna be 14 to 29% of your points coming from a dynamic style or category of movement. And what are these movements, like what are these movements? We have farmers, we have front carries, like Husenfeld carries or keg carries. We have yoke, really we have everything, okay? So that's one of the interesting things about this style of movement is dynamic uh, is one of those categories of movement that consists to everything. One of the reasons that it, uh, the, one of the reasons that it is present in every one of these other categories, as well as endurance is, but one of the reasons that it's present in all of these categories is because the principle of time under tension. So if you're doing a log max, we'll say, and you have a style where you clean the log up and then immediately you dip and jerk the weight and you lock it out and you get the down signal, and from start to finish it was three seconds. You spent three seconds under, like, under tension, the next person comes up, they take two seconds to lap it, hold it there for one second, clean it, two seconds on the chest, and then press it, one second of wobbling up here. They took six to seven seconds to really complete the lift. That's a lot longer. That's more than twice as long of time under tension, and that's going to, uh, that's going to mean that they're going to be a little bit beat up from that event, okay? They spent more energy on that event, even if they're stronger than you. Um, so dynamic pays dividends. It's, a, it's something that consists, it's a, it's a component in really every category of movement. And we can get into that in the advanced theory of strongman, or we can have, uh, we're probably going to be doing a video on every single one of these categories anyway. So we'll probably talk about that quite a bit. Um, there may also be a series that's going to be strongman philosophy or advanced strongman theory. If you guys wanna see that, I need to know because it would be nice to know that uh, I'm not just making these videos for myself. Anyway, moving on from the dynamic, we have grip. So grip is going to be about one of five events in a one day contest, and that's gonna be 20% of your points. And in a two day contest, it's usually gonna be one of seven events, which is gonna be 14% of your points coming from a grip event. And those events consist of farmers, Hercules hold, arm over arm, anything that's really stressing the grip. And sometimes they can even be deadlifts. I've seen deadlifts where you're not allowed to wear straps and people fail at the grip, which means it's a grip component. Okay, so grip is one of those kind of sneaky categories that can kind of slip in. And this is where we need to talk very briefly about 
almost every movement has multiple categories within it, okay? Almost no movement is purely just, just one of these categories, but almost every movement has a primary category that it would fall under. So how are these grip events scored? Well, typically they're done with time, right? If we have a farmer's, we're racing. It's the shortest time wins, ready, go. And then time, the shortest time wins, right? If we have something like a Hercules hold, we actually have something more like a duration. So the time is working against us. We wanna hold it as long as we can. We wanna just hold out and we're shaking and we're like, ah! We're seeing as long as we can hold that until the grip fails. The person that holds it the longest wins. That's a little bit different. And then for distance uh, would be something a little bit like farmers. So that's something that I've seen. A maximum distance farmers at a set weight, either in a set time or no time domain, just drop domain. So you, you don't, you're not allowed to any drops and it's as far as you can walk. I do love that event. It's, it's a very grueling event and you get to see what people are made out of. Um, arm over arm is gonna be a time domain. It's gonna be as quickly as you can pull it. We need to get moving on this. So category five is gonna be loading. It's gonna, uh, for a one day contest, you're gonna get about 20% of your points from the loading events. In a two day contest, you're gonna get about 14% of your points from loading events. This category of events consists of stones, kegs, sandbags, odd objects, anything you can load. And typically you're gonna be loading over a bar or loading onto a platform. And it's going to be scored in the repetition format. So set time domain, as many repetitions as you can complete. You will also see a time component which is present in the medley or series. And what do I mean by medley or series? Medley is going to be more of a back and forth, a 250 pound keg over a bar, 250 pound sandbag over a bar, keg over a bar, sandbag over a bar, just back and forth, back and forth. A series is gonna be something more like five separate stones and you're gonna be loading each one and as soon as you're complete with loading all of them, boom, time. That's a time component, okay? So that's loading. Next is gonna be medley and endurance and we're gonna move this a little closer so you guys can see it. So medley and endurance. Sometimes it's gonna be zero percent of your movements in a contest, but oftentimes it's gonna be between zero and 20% of your points in a one day contest. And I have seen two day contests that have two, uh, two of these style of movements or this category of movement, which would mean 29%. So zero to 29% of your uh, points can come from one of these. But remember that a medley and endurance style of movement is kind of, it's kind of a basic component of strongman, okay? It's you have to be good in a set time domain. You have to be able to be strong and perform within a 60 second window. And there's a lot of jokes around that and they're all hilarious. So <laughs> examples of medleys and endurance include loading, pressing medleys, two object push pull. I really like those ones. So sometimes you see a medley where you have to clean and press a, move, a weight and then you set it down and then you have to go deadlift a weight and then you just go back and forth and back and forth in a set time domain. Maximum repetitions wins. It's, medleys are very interesting, but almost always they're scored in a time domain. And then the last of the seven is the miscellaneous. Typically you're gonna see this as one of five movements in a, in a one day contest, which means 20% of your points coming from this style of movement. Sometimes you get zero, right? Sometimes there's none of them. These are, these are weird movements sometimes, and we'll get into what kind of movements they are. Um, Sometimes in a, in a two day contest, you can have, you know, we'll use the Arnold as an, as an example. I've seen three of 10 events in an Arnold um, fall into the miscellaneous category. Uh, and this has been 30% of the points available, right? So this is a huge percentage. And what kind of movements are these? The keg tosses, they're odd object carries, they're tire flips, they're arm over arms. There are a bunch of different movements that are very specific that are super awkward, that are just like, what? Like, they're ones that will catch you off guard, okay? And these are, they're really some of the greatest movements in Strongman, in my opinion, because that's what Strongman's about, is being strong in just like weird, obscure ways, okay? So typically these are standalone movements. They're not very commonly lumped into medleys. They're almost always standalones, and they're almost always scored in a time format. Um, like a race, uh, so like keg toss is a race, odd object carry is a distance or a race, tire flip is a race, arm over arm is a race, 
we're seeing as quickly as we can complete something. So almost always the odd object and the, the miscellaneous category is a race. And so this really concludes our first video on the, uh, on the substance of the seven categories of strongman movement within the strongman theory uh, series. Next time we're gonna be talking about training splits, okay? So uh, there's, there's so much to go over there. If you guys have any questions about this video's content or future videos that you would like me to address different subjects, different categories, um, clarifying questions on what was covered, any competing theories, just let me know and I'll be happy to address them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. We'd appreciate the support of the likes and the shares and all that stuff. And if you think someone can benefit from this information, uh, sharing it is free. So much appreciated. I'll catch you guys in the next one.